What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. All right, so today we are back with the Pathfinder. Right, if you guys can see it right back here, I pretty much it is time to do the rear brakes in the car. Now, everybody knows on these Pathfinders, the new 22 Pathfinders, the rear brakes last between, I'm gonna say 14,000 to maybe 30,000. My wife actually got 28,000 out of these, but there are people that have been getting a lot less than that. There's been a lot of complaints out there. I see it on the Facebook groups and everything else that you know they should be warranted. Some dealers are warranting them, but honestly, it's the size of the pads. The pads are very tiny pads. They only come with nine or eight millimeters only, I think it is. So they, Nissan put these very tiny pads on these things that wear out very quickly. On top of that, if you guys like to use that auto hold feature, which my wife does like to use that feature, which kind of activates that when you're stopped at a light, um, that also causes the pads to wear even because you're using the rear pads. And on top of that, when you are, it, which you should be parking using your parking brake. So if you're in a slope and a downhill slope or uphill uh, angle and you're parking the car, you should not just be putting the car in park. You should be engaging the brakes so the brakes hold the car, not your parking paw and your transmission because that's bad for it. So anytime you're parking and anytime on a level surface, either going downhill or uphill, put it in neutral, engage the parking brake, and then put it in park after the parking brake is engaged. That way the brakes hold the car, not your transmission. Anyways, back to the subject. So basically, when you're using your parking brake like you should be, you're using those rear pads. Now, on a traditional parking brake, which was the one with the lever, it's cable-driven lever, or the ones you step on, you had a little extra pedal, which you would step on there. Uh, that is a cable-driven. That pulls a small tensioner that's inside of your housing where your drum housing is at. There's shoes in there still. Even though you have uh, it, this brakes in the back, there's still shoes inside of this drum. And when that cable is pulled, that releases that tension, which lets the shoes come apart and hold the brake. That's pretty much your manual parking brake. When they started coming out with electric, my Escalade, my 16 Escalade has an electric motor, but not like the Pathfinder. My Escalade has an electric motor that pretty much does the same thing a manual one does, which you pull the little lever and then the motor basically in a pulley form pulls the cable does the same thing i still again you still have those shoes and drum in there and they expand out and they hold on to the car in this case these cars now have an actual motor hooked up to the actual caliper a lot of manufacturers want to do that for a couple things um, it is bcm driven which is driven by the computer so the computer can tell when it needs to apply those in the case of an emergency in case you're going downhill and you forget to put it in park it'll automatically apply those brakes if you're in auto hold and you're downhill and you let off the brake it'll apply the brakes man automatically and of course some weight savings you don't have shoes in the back of this thing anymore there's no extra you know springs or anything else like that in the back brakes it's literally just the rotor and the caliper with this plastic mo with, with this motor, it's the uh, plastic housing, and that's that's it. That's all there is to it. And the way it works is when you engage that, a plunger comes out, pushing the piston up against the brake pad, which clamps down your rotor, which basically keeps the car from moving. When you release it, that same motor deactivates, pulls that plunger back, and then your piston's released. And then of course the car can move again. So that is. The reasoning for this basically it was more of a they are saying it is weight reduction which i mean if you lose some of that stuff you probably lose about i don't know 10 pounds maybe i don't know but that's what manufacturers are going off of and on top of that it's easy to service this thing so let's just say on a regular traditional brake where you basically pull the lever if your cable snaps and you don't have a parking brake anymore you have to replace an entire cable from the front to the back of the car same thing if shoes get stuck you got to replace shoes springs it's a lot more work than pulling the caliper out and that actual motor can be taken apart from the caliper another one can be replaced or you can replace the whole assembly in all in one shot so it is easy to service it and just a little bit safer what i would say is because it does keep that air from uh, forgetting to apply that brake on a downhill slope it automatically knows you're a downhill slope and the car will apply the brakes automatically but anyways enough talking I know you guys are here for it. What you're actually here for is to find out how to do these brakes. So very simple. What you're going to need is a couple of tools, and I'll go over those in a second. But all you need is a 9 to 12 volt battery to be able to retract that actual piston back, that plunger. And then you're able to push the piston, compress the piston back in the spot, and that is it. And then the rest of the brakes, you do it just like a normal brake job you would do. So 
Let's go ahead and get started without any more talking. And I want to give you guys a basis of where, how these brakes work. So let's go ahead and get started with this car and I'll show you how to do this. Now I'm not gonna go through the whole entire brake change process because once you retract that piston, the rest of the brake change process, if you're replacing rotors, you, you basically take out the, the bracket. If you're not replacing rotors, then you just put the pads on and you go. And that's pretty much it. That's, there's not much to it. It's just the retraction of the electric brake. So let me show you how that's done. And I'll show you what tools you need for the actual entire brake job. So I'm going to be using the factory pads and rotors. If you guys want the part numbers, I'll have them down on the description below. We're going to need a 14 millimeter socket, a 21 millimeter socket, a 3 8 ratchet, a 17 millimeter wrench, a 12 volt source of some kinds to back up the e-brake. And I'm going to be using some CRC quiet stop. You want to use this on the back of the pads, as well as the piston compressor for the caliper some brushes and some wire wheels to clean up any rust, a mallet in case the rotor does not want to come out. All right, so now you guys know what tools to use. So now I'm gonna show you how to make the basically tool to retract the brake caliper. So now you take a nine volt or a 12 volt source. I always recommend a 12 volt source is better, it's quicker. And you need some wiring. What I did is I took some 16 gauge wire, a black one and a red one. And then I took some terminals. I took some male terminals cut the plastics out of them, solder the wiring into this, and then heat shrink everything. So it kind of is nice and stable and it's got a more solid connection. On the other end, I took a female terminal, just like that, and a just a little probe, nothing major, just basically a, a, a normal probe on there. And then again, heat shrink everything to it, soldered inside of here, so it's got a good connection. Now, what I'm gonna do is basically, to make this work, you take a 12 volt battery, an M12 battery, and you find out where your positive and negative is. It's got these two inserts right here, pretty much the two outlets. And your negative is normally the one on the right hand side. It's got a C1 negative on there. So we're gonna take our negative and hook it up right onto there, and our positive, which is our red wire, and hook it up to the positive side. See, just like that. So now we have 12 volts. Now, just so you guys can see, I'm going to take I got a voltmeter right next to here. So you can see this voltmeter right there. I'm gonna take the negative and touch it with the negative, or positive, sorry, positive and touch it with the positive. And we have 11.9 volts. So now we have our tool to retract the electronic brake caliper. And that's all there is to it. That is it. I didn't spend any money other than the money I've already spent before on the tools that I already have and the wiring that was, I've got lying around or a bunch of it. So really I didn't have to go out and buy anything. Now, if you guys want to get some 12 gauge wire, I will put some descriptions down below for these terminals, but you could pick them up anywhere. You go to Home Depot, you go to an automotive shop, anything, autos anywhere, get some wiring, get some leads. And as long as you got a 12 volt source, you're good to go. We're gonna remove the caliper. You're gonna need to remove these bolts here. You're gonna do that by using the 14 and 17 millimeter wrench. You're gonna take your 14 and put it on the outside bolt and hold, grab on and make sure you hold on to that 17. Same thing on the top. Now I use a power tool to make it go quicker here. Once you have both bolts out, you can pull the piston off. Now you wanna disconnect this before doing that. So you're gonna take a small screwdriver, push back on the little red tab you see in there and kinda of just pry your way around this. Make sure you don't break this locking tab because then it won't lock properly in there. You're gonna have to figure out a way to keep that locked in there. Pull that back with your fingers and then push down and pull out on the connector. And now you've disconnected your emergency parking brake or your electric parking brake. Then you're gonna see these two leads inside of that caliper parking brake assembly. You're gonna take your tool and you're gonna connect the positive and negative to, one or to each one of these leads. If the piston starts coming out, you're going the wrong way, you're gonna wanna switch the leads around. You shouldn't see the piston move. Do it for about five seconds, and it should sound kind of like this. Now use your tool to compress the piston. Now if it stops while you're compressing it, keep adding power to this until you're able to retract the piston all the way down. That is it. Now go ahead and finish up the, brake, the rest of the brake job. Pretty much take your pads out, save these backing shims and these backing plates for this. You're gonna have to clean these up because the factory ones don't come with this. Then you're gonna take your 21 millimeter if you're replacing the rotors, loosen up the bracket for the caliper, 
And if your rotor stuck, just hit it with the mallet, pull it out, and that's it. Clean everything up properly, including the backing plates. Make sure there's no rust or very little rust. Let's try to get as much of the rust out of here as you can. Spray some brake cleaner on it. Use a small brush to get around on the hub area here. And then clean these small shim plates that are gonna go back on the back of the pads. Also, I like to use some kind of anti-seize on the hub here area just so basically it doesn't seize up as much next time you uh, go and take the rotor out because with these cars especially, I'll probably be doing this again another 30,000 miles or less. Go ahead and place the rotor back on there and now go ahead and clean the bracket. Again, these brakes or these uh, pads don't come with any new shims or any hardware. So you're gonna have to clean everything up properly. So let's just make sure I got as much as rust as I possibly could, clean them as best as I possibly can. And then of course, do not forget to always lube up the caliper slides. You always wanna make sure you pull these out, lubricate them properly so they don't get stuck and then cause an even greater uneven or even quicker wear on your pads. You do that by just basically just pulling on them, hold on to the little boot and pull out on them. They'll probably be a little bit hard because of some corrosion buildup in there, but you should be able to pull them out just like that with your hands. Make sure you don't damage any of the boots. Put some lube on them and go ahead and reinsert them back in there and clean any excess lube that you have on the side of the boot off. Once you got that clean, go ahead and reinstall everything back together. Make sure everything's nice and tight. I will have torque specs in the description below. Once you have that ready, let's go ahead and get the pads back in there. Now you're gonna take the CRC, and again, I like to use this stuff because it basically makes like a rubber film on it and it keeps everything in place. So you just kind of place this around the slots you see in there, put the first bracket on, and the, the outside of this has, or the inner one has two shims on there. Same thing, just kind of put all this stuff, kind of like to lube it up really good here, just to make sure that this plates don't move at all. Take any access of the lube you have on there and make sure you just wipe that all that off so that it doesn't get anywhere else. Do the same thing for both sides and also do it on the ends. So anything that's gotta be making contact pretty much, you wanna kinda use this stuff on. Go ahead and reinstall the inner one. And again, do the same thing for the outer one. Once both pads are back in there, go ahead and reinstall the caliper. So the same way you took out the caliper, just put the bolts back on there. Use your 17 millimeter and your 14. The 17 holds the inner nut on there. And then the 14, of course, does the tightening. And then don't forget to plug in the electric brake caliper. Make sure you plug that in, you push it all the way in until you hear the click. Okay, so we are done with the brakes. Um, again, it wasn't very hard to do, it's just very easy. Just make sure you touch the, don't, one thing I will tell you, do not touch the same lead with a negative and positive. You can short out that whole motor and that's the end of that. So just make sure you protect it when you put it in there. Uh, that's why I have a female connector so I can just kind of push it in there and that holds on its own and I can touch the lead with the other one. That was a little bit safer so I'm not trying to hold both leads in there or both cables in there at the same time to uh, back up the caliper. And again, just if you put one lead on and it starts to pull, actually push away or basically push the piston out, just stop and then reverse it back the other way. And that's that, that simple, very easy to do. So now that we did that, 
Now we gotta get in the car. Of course, like always, when you do brakes, we have to pump the brakes a few times. And again, we got no trouble lights. Pump the brakes. Make sure you get some pressure built up on the calipers to expand again. And now let's press, let's pull the brake lever. So let's see here. So now we got the parking brake is on. Turn it off, it releases, I can feel it on the pedal. Again, no warning lights, so let's go ahead and test this out. So we're gonna put it in drive, move forward. Stop the brake. And then let's see, I'm on the I'm in drive right now with the parking brake on that should hold the car. And the car is holding. Foot off the brake. Parking brake's engaged. You can see right there it's in park. And we're good to go. That is it. That is the end of the job. So now we're going to go test drive this, make sure that everything's okay. But again, you can hear it engaging and disengaging. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that, but... So I'm going to go ahead and test drive the car, and I'll be back to you guys to, to finish up the video in a little bit. All right, so I'm back from driving the car, and everything is good. All is good. So nothing to worry about, no lights coming on, no service brake system or anything like that coming out, which is good. So that means good job, well done. So if you follow my steps, again, you guys will be okay. Now, I am gonna basically kind of go on a little rant here because in the Facebook pages, I've heard a lot of people complaining about the brakes on the cars. And I kind of touched this in the beginning, but I did go back with the original equipment brakes. And you're gonna ask, well, why did you go back with those brakes? They only last you 28,000 miles. Well, 28,000 miles is kind of okay. Now, some cars do get a lot more. I remember on the Rogue that I used to have, it's actually on the channel here, and I did brakes, 98,000 miles that car got. Yes, 98,000 miles. So that is that was amazing. I mean, no, I'm sorry, not 98, I'm sorry, we traded out at 98. 70,000 miles is what they got on its first set of brakes. But again, it was a lighter car. This is a little bit heavier car for one. Two, it uses the brakes a lot more especially because of the auto hold and my wife does use that our driveway is also slanted as you can tell right there so when you park it like this it automatically applies the brake now people out there are complaining about them only lasting 12 or 15,000 miles now some people are getting the brakes warranted by the dealer which is amazing good for you brakes are normally just wear and tear and i would say if you if your brakes were out in 10,000 miles then there's an issue Yes, it should be warranty, but anything past that point, it is a wear and tear item. Now, again, everybody's gonna be like, well, it shouldn't be wearing out. How heavy are you on the car? I've seen people so far trying to put an intake on this car. K&N already makes an intake for this car. It's a short air intake. The intake's not gonna do anything because it's a hot air intake. It's basically in the mat inside the engine. You're just sucking in hot air. It's doing nothing for the car, honestly. So people that are doing this, like putting, and again, more power to you to each your own, it's your car, your money. I'm just stating my point. They're putting intake on this car. This is not a performance truck by any chance, by any being. It, it's not an off-road. I mean, I've seen it maybe do a little bit off-roading, gravel roads here, but no way this thing, any type of performance truck where it's gonna go anywhere. Way too many computers. It is a road car. It is a street car, that's all it is. And if you're heavy on the car and heavy on the gas, you're more likely heavy on the brakes, you're gonna run through those tiny little baby brake pads fairly quickly. So that's all basically. And again, that's my opinion. You guys can put in your comment what you think. And let me know everybody's gonna come in the comments and why did I use the same, you know, original equipment pads and everything. The reason is because I wanted to stick with the original equipment on this car. My wife does no type of performance driving. My wife does nothing crazy. And on top of that, there's not very many options out there. I like to use PowerStop on most of my cars and PowerStop had, I think three sets of ones. One is their cheaper one, which I, I can't stand that the cheap version they have. They have a little upgrade on there, but it was the same price as the original equipment, which well, I was having any money whatsoever there. And they have the tow ones, which I actually have on my Escalade, which is a Z23s, I believe, or Z26s for heavy use. And if that's what you do with it, perfectly fine. But again, she drives this to work, back, grocery store, parents' house, in-laws, that's it. It drives in the city. There, 
The only off-roading she ever does is when she kind of hits, goes off of the, the side of the driveway right here a little bit sometimes. That's it. That's the only off-roading this car ever sees. So again, to each their own, that was just my point of what I'm seeing with these cars and people complaining about them getting very little life on the rear brakes. Again, the front brakes, 28,000 miles and they're at six millimeters. I still have another good four millimeters to go. This will probably, probably be 40,000 miles before I replace the front brakes. But anyways, with that being said, I hope you guys did find this video very informative. If you did, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on my next video. Peace.